Directions for your Jeff Koons balloon dog. Remember your name and teacher code on the back. You're gonna start by creating your background. You're gonna draw your horizon line about a hand's amount of space from the bottom of your paper and then use a variety of rectangles to create your cityscape. And I would like it if you could demonstrate your understanding of overlapping by creating that the idea that some buildings are in front of others by stopping and starting your line, such as right here, you get to decide how you want to fill up the space. It's entirely up to you. And then you're going to go ahead and add whatever details you want. And after your pencil drawing is complete, you can grab a black Sharpie marker and retrace your pencil lines very carefully. If you want to use the rectangles to retrace your lines, you can, or you can use them as well to create straight lines. Add clouds, windows, doors, grass, you name it. Fill it with lots of interesting details. You'll be using tempera cake paint to add color to your background. Make sure there's a visible puddle in your paint in order for it to work. You have to gently rub and stir your brush against the paint in order for it to work as well. You'll notice the bristles of your brush turning that color so you know it's ready. And you have a variety of size brushes that you can use. Notice it's the yellow handle brushes and the black handle brushes. And then apply the paint as you normally would. Nice big brush strokes paying attention to detail. The more water you add to the paint, the more transparent or see-through it's going to be. The less water you have, the darker it will be. When you switch colors, it is helpful to use a paper towel or a blotting sponge to get off the extra color and water. But do remember, in order for this paint to work, we have to add water to it. You can also apply colors on top of each other and if you overlap them, they start to blend together. So here you'll see me add a little yellow on top of my green that's still wet. Also, if your colors get a little mucked up, so here you can see that there was a little bit of green and my yellow, so I'm just using a paper towel to gently wipe it off. Sometimes you have to wet down the paper towel a little bit if the paint is still dry. Once again, add a puddle and keep going with your paint. You have to gently rub your brush against the surface to get it to work well. To blend colors, make sure that you have plenty of water on your brush and your paint, and you can overlap and create lots of beautiful color creations. Here is an example of how just simply adding water to your paper can really help your paint spread out and it's also a really great way to help the colors blend together. So if you notice, I just dipped into my bucket and went directly to my paper before I switched colors. Now yet again, I'm painting on top of the orange paint that's still fairly wet because I added quite a bit of water to my paper. And then I'll just dip directly into my brush and then back onto my paper again to help that paint move around and the colors blend together. Please notice I did not rinse my brush, I just dipped the top of it into my water to help the paint flow better on my paper. If you need to, if your water gets kind of dark, then you'll probably need to change it out, but as long as it's not very dark with other colors, it should be fine and you won't have any troubles with colors mixing. To create your balloon dog, you'll need to create seven ovals and a couple of them with some extra details. That would be the details on your balloon. And don't forget your name. If you're writing on the front of your paper, make sure it's nice and small. I'm gonna start at the bottom with my oval. Very carefully trace. They should be pretty close together so that you can fit all seven of them on your paper. I would say maybe about a finger's amount of space in between each oval and then the one at the top you do sideways. Then I'm gonna add kind of a U shape for the tail, and then I will add two lines that go out at a slight angle and a slightly curved line to create the sort of nose shape. Then we need to do some outlining with a black Sharpie and a paint marker. 
For the smaller spots, or the smaller parts of your balloon, you're gonna use a Sharpie, just because the paint marker is way too large. I did go over it to make the line a little bit fatter. And then same thing on the kind of nose part of your balloon. Then you'll use a paint marker to trace on the inside of your pencil lines, not on your pencil lines, inside of your pencil lines. Otherwise we won't have enough space. If you need to get your paint marker going on your placemat, sometimes they're a little stubborn and trace on the inside of your oval shape. You can kind of see where my pencil line's peeking through there. So really important, the inside so that they all fit correctly. And then as long as your black lines are dry, you can add the little highlights where the light might hit a shiny surface and create a bright white light. So I'm just adding slightly curved lines that follow the shape of my oval, a longer one and a shorter one on each of the sides of my oval. These do not have to be precise. They're kind of wispy, quick lines. Like I said, I'm doing a short one and a long one using the very tippy top of my brush. And this time I'm using one of the green handle brushes. When your balloon shapes are done and your background, you're going to very, very carefully cut out your balloon shapes. Remember to turn your paper and your scissors are just opening and closing very slowly and you're cutting on the outside of your black lines very slowly. Take your time so that your cuts are nice and smooth. When everything's cut out, you can lay out the pieces. I like to find the tail and the nose piece first because everything else after that is the same exact oval shape. So find your ear, your belly, your neck, and your legs and position them kind of where you want them. You'll probably have to make adjustments as you go. So once you get everything laid out, you might want to shift your dog up or down on your paper or center it more before you add glue. When you're done positioning all your oval pieces, go ahead and add small dots of glue. There's not any special order that you have to glue anything. Just make sure that you're not adding too much glue and try not to bump the pieces that are laid on your paper so you don't lose track of where they go. After all your pieces are glued, it is helpful to gently turn your paper over and massage the back of it to get the pieces nice and flat. 